here today. I am making a small migration from the world of pen and paper to the world of 3D modeling on a computer. I'm going to be using Rhino 7 today, a 3D modeling program, of which there are many. There are so many 3D modeling programs. And when, and when I was trying to choose which one to use, you can Google things like, which 3D modeling program is the best? And you'll get about a billion different answers. Um, I just Googled it. Um, uh, but my, my method for choosing a 3D modeling program was manifold. But one thing I did was just to Google it over and over again with slightly different wording. And then whichever um, program I saw popping up the most is kind of the one I chose. Now the wording I was using was significant because I'm trying to, uh, next fall, I'm going back to continue on my second year of an interior architecture program, which is kind of a hybrid program of interior design and architecture. And Rhino is, um, it seems like, from what I've gathered, a popularly used program. Some of the other programs um, often used in that sphere seem to be um, AutoCAD, which is a kind of an older, um, more, uh, maybe, I don't know, legacy program, but it's still still widely used, and, and it feels like the slightly more technical um, partner to Rhino for architectural stuff might be Revit. Uh, maybe it seems like I haven't used much of Revit, but it seems like maybe it's a, maybe a more modern and robust version of AutoCAD, but of course AutoCAD is still very modern. Besides all of this, which 3D modeling program you choose comes down to a lot of different factors. Uh, personal preference, personal PC, how, how powerful your computer is, um, what you're trying to do, where you've come from, where you're going, um, your hobbies, your profession, your personal uh, experience with various things. The first 3D modeling program I ever used um, back in high school, which is a long time ago now, was Blender. And it was free then. It's free now if you ever want to try any 3D modeling. This, pro this program I'm using here is actually probably very expensive normally, but I'm since I'm enrolled at school right now, I can get it for free. I think I did at least. Um, I can get it for free, and but but Blender is a pretty widely lauded program that you can use for free. It's um, you can just download it off their website. Um, another one is SketchUp, which used to be free, and now it's not. If I remember correctly, SketchUp used to be owned by Google, and it was free when they owned it, and. They, I think they mostly used it for creating buildings and shapes for Google Earth, uh, but then they sold it to a company called Trimble, and now SketchUp costs money except for the web, the web browser version, which of course uh, is trash, I assume. I would never use a web browser version of a 3D modeling program. That just sounds miserable and slow. But besides that, just off the top of my head, I can name, uh, there's Maya, uh, Houdini, uh, uh, Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, ZBrush, and 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 these, uh, and then there's some of those game engines too. I don't know if those count as 3D modeling programs. I think maybe you're supposed to use 3D modeling programs to import uh, entities or assets or whatever into the game engines. But basically, which one are you going to use is mostly based on you know whether you're trying to make stuff for a video game or for a movie or for 3D printing or for, uh, you know, architecture. I, I, I don't know, whatever you want or which one you're more, most comfortable with or have most access to or whatever. You can figure it out. Anyways, I didn't mean to talk about that for so long. What I do want to talk about is why I'm doing this. And what I'm doing here are not school projects. Um, I have signed up for summer school but it's currently April. I don't think summer school starts for another couple of weeks um, in May. Wow. Summer, summer school is about to start. And anyways, just the year is going by fast. Anyways, um, that'll start in the fall. But I've just been, I like, I, I want to download the software, get accustomed to it. So I was doing su some tutorials. And then, but the best way for me to learn is just to like use the software, start messing around, try to do things with it. And so that's what I'm 
doing here in this video and it was a little bit difficult to record in the second project i'm doing two projects here these are my second and third projects uh and but they're not really projects they're just i call them 3d doodles and it's more of a mindset that relates them to doodles than anything else in the sense that just like my normal 2d pen and ink doodles i didn't plan anything out which is probably um not how you're usually going to be making and designing things. I learned that very thoroughly in my first year at Interior Architecture School. Um, they make you plan everything out, do excessive um, planning and repeated iterations in your process, right, which was very different than my normal um, creative process, which was just to go and start and make something and uh, just be um, happy with whatever you ended up making and be thankful for it and to look, 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 look at what you made and then move on to the next piece. And that, that was the iterative process um, to take, take something from every piece you made in the past and store it away in your brain and put it into the future pieces you make. Um, but then anyways, so I'm still kind of doing that since I haven't actually started classes yet. I'm like, now is my chance to do whatever I want and I can do my normal doodly um, creative method here with my 3D programs before they start making me planning everything out, right? So I would just, you know, like start uh, making a shape and then add to it. And, you know, and I'm just practicing the basic little functions that I learned in these tutorials I did, you know, like add to a shape, take away a shape, you know, extrude, uh, stretch, you know, or extend or whatever it's called, all these little things. And I'm just like learning so much, which is what I wanted to learn about like the best way to work. Uh, Cause it's a little bit simpler when I draw, I just know, you know, draw a line, draw another line next to it, keep drawing lines. But here with 3D, 3D modeling, it's uh, there's so many other little things with the, the work process. Like, uh, you know, if I wanna make like a bunch of one image or a bunch of one shape, I can turn it into a, like a nested block of its own so that if I make 10 of something, I can just edit one and all 10 of them get edited, right? So I'm, what I realized the hard way is that pretty much anything that I'm gonna make more than one of, I should make one of these nested objects where I can just edit it once and everything else, every other iteration of the object gets automatically up updated. And that makes it much more easy uh, to go about doing what I'm trying to do. Just like little workflow things like that, just becoming more comfortable with the software and I've just I've learned a lot already but I've just barely barely dipped my toe this is the, this is one of those softwares that are you know I'm pretty sure are made to be used professionally by you know powerful big companies that are doing big things I think I think I think it is I don't think I'm on the playground anymore I think I was on the playground when I was using SketchUp maybe but I think this is a program you can do real things with I and mean, not the sketch i mean i think people do real things because one time i did take a tour of some uh architectural firms in portland i think it was portland yeah anyways and i saw some of them using sketchup which surprised me a little bit but um also some of them saw some of them using revit and rhino because we could like look at their look at their computers and what they were doing and saw some of their designs and models up on their computer screens and stuff. Yeah, so that was the main objective here. Get com get more comfortable with the software. It, the, the, the less of a barrier the actual software feels between me and the actual thing I'm gonna try to create, uh, the cooler thing, the cooler the, the end result will be, right? Like if you try to use a pen and the pen is giving you a hard, a hard time and you're struggling with the pen, you're probably not going to draw a very cool drawing because you're just going to be frustrated with it the whole time trying to figure out, you know, should I hold it this way? Should I hold it that way? Is it supposed to be straight up? Is it supposed to be at an angle? Do I have to press hard or not? You know, all these little things you're wondering about the pen itself, you're not going to be concentrating on the drawing. So what I'm just trying to do now is just learn the software, get comfortable with it, and, uh, and then, then I can focus on making things. And uh, the... Like I said, I, there's a million other things to do with this software, like other plugins, like Enscape I'm trying to get, which is for like making it so you can walk through uh, and, and render the, the things you make really nice. 
uh, make it and uh and uh grasshopper is another one to make like cool um I don't know how to explain it. I don't, there's all these fancy words I'm still learning. Um, but also, basically, someone commented. I thought it was an interesting comment. Well, I wasn't sure how to um, respond, honestly. Um, I posted pictures of all these if you want to look at them on like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, this last, at the time of me recording this, the most recent comment, actually, set, uh, fourth, so more people have commented since, but... It says, it's good, but I'm surprised you haven't tried to recreate your usual style in 3D. And that really made me think, because like I mentioned before, I'm still recreating my usual thought process or approach in the sense that I'm not planning it. I'm just kind of having fun adding, and uh, especially in like the second piece now, uh, you'll see that I can, uh, several at first, I was planning on the orientation of a whole piece being one direction and the roof of one part I end up taking away and then rotating around and then putting back on the bottom as a sort of walkway and stuff like that. Um, not being too attached to one certain end result is the same kind of philosophy I have with my my doodles and my drawings, right? But this this thing that says, this person commented, you haven't tried to recreate your usual style in 3D. Um, I mean, in a sense, I would like to recreate my usual style in 3D, like make some cool, um, intricate, like weird inventions and stuff, which I think I kind of have with the second one. But I also feel like that that ultimately won't ever be my goal. Like I won't try to, I'm not going to try to make something that looks exactly like my drawings with a 3D modeling program, right? Because otherwise, what's the point of using a 3D modeling program if I'm just going to stay at square one while using a totally different medium. Like when I make, when I use my acrylic paints uh, and I paint, I don't use a bunch of colorful paints and stuff to try to make black and white line drawings either. I think it's fun to use different mediums and do different things with those mediums and appreciate it. It's kind of refreshing and fun. No, no hard feelings or offense to the person who commented that. It really made me think for a second because I was like, wait, maybe I should be, wait, no, I shouldn't, wait, wait, what am I supposed to be accomplishing here? The answer is I'm supposed to be accomplishing uh, whatever I want, wherever I, wherever my mind leads me. Sometimes when I'm making things or creating things, I I have this weird, here's an art metaphor for you, this, I, this weird feeling that I'm falling down a bottomless pit, which at first sounds a little scary and grim, but... I'm falling down a bottomless pit, but I can reach out and touch the walls of the pit, right? And they're usually pretty smooth. I'm falling, the walls are flying by. I can feel them at my fingertips. But every now and then, I, my, my hands, they grab onto something that was sliding by, and I hang on to it. And that's just me with art and, and, and creativity, drawing ideas, anything. I'm just like, there, I'm just... I'm just grabbing at things, all right? I'm like, what? whatever my mind happens to be wanting to latch on to at the time, I just take whatever I can get. Because sometimes I, I lose grip of like draw, a certain type of drawing or wanting, because for a long time I was, I had held on to like drawing mandalas and stuff. That was like three years of my life I drew mandalas. But then I, I lost grip of that and I started falling again. I started scrabbling at the walls and then I, you know, I, gripped onto something else and it's fine to be gripping onto several things at once as you and i don't think it's a negative the falling into a uh bottomless pit has kind of a negative connotation but i don't think it really does uh and it's not supposed to in this metaphor maybe it's not the best metaphor ever maybe it shouldn't be more like you're flying through the air and you're grabbing it at you're flying through the air over a, over a lake and there's a bunch of fish jumping out of the lake and you're grabbing at any of them that you can grab and I don't know you hopefully you get it I'm not I'm not being like too, I'm not trying to be too picky about what I do I'm just saying like whatever my mind seems to be interested in I'm like sometimes I just wake up and I think I'm very thankful by the way that I'm able to do this I wake up and I think hmm what am I interested in? Like, 
what seems interesting? And then I try to make art about that, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, and, and these, these also another reason why these 3D, 3D models are cool to me is because a lot of my inspiration for making 2D art comes from the real three-dimensional world. So it kind of feels like it's coming full circle a little bit in the sense that I can almost give myself inspiration by making 3D models. And I make these 3D models and all, they almost feel like toys that I can play with as I turn them around and I can see the lines I made from multiple angles. I turn it this way, I see some lines, I turn it the other way, I see other lines and they all interact in different cool ways. It's very, very satisfying to make something like this. And I'm I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it and I look forward to making more things. The only downside is sometimes it takes the same number of days to make um, edit the videos as it does to make the 3D models themselves. So I'll have to figure out how to do that better. Or maybe I just, sometimes I just watch too much Twitch at the same time while editing videos. So it takes me like twice as long as it should. So that's my own fault actually. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Let me know if you got any tips and tricks. I'm sure some of you do. I may or may not read them. I mean, I will read them all, but ultimately I've just got to make a bunch more models, figure it out myself. Give me tips and tricks for which plugins and stuff are good. Tell me everything. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what not to tell me. I'm here. Tell me. Here. My ears are open. All right. Goodbye. Love you.